In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn this into this using nothing but a dry brush and a handful of paints. So welcome to another video from Artist Opus. We have something very different in this one. I am going to be trying to replicate the paint job on this Star Wars Legion vehicle. So it's an amazing kit, it's really, really good. I have it assembled here, it's quite big. Uh, there we go, um, got gorgeous, gorgeous surfaces on. We're gonna try and get this done 100% without airbrush, so all, all dry brushing primarily. And particularly the challenge, what I wanna do is try and exactly replicate this artwork as much as possible. So you might notice that it's, it's kind of warmer hue towards the top a bit cooler towards the bottom and obviously there's more weathering in the lower sections as well. I really like the colours in this artwork so what we're going to do is grab this one, make a star and let's see how close I can get it to the artwork. I've not looked at any paint references or anything like that but we've got a gorgeous base to put it on so we're going to try and replicate the paint job from the box and uh, let's go. So for our base coating stage we're going to be using Holdra Blue from Scale 75 Fancy and Games range and Nairoth Knight from Games Workshop. These are both very deep colours, they have to go in the recesses and we're going to try and get this coating the entirety of the model using our dampening pad. I've just put a bit of water in there off camera already. This is a heavy coat by stippling dry brushing standards, that doesn't mean the paint's going to be thick but we do want it to get everywhere and we're not worried if it goes on wet. So I'm going to take the top off because I believe that's going to make my life easier and separate the two pieces here. We've got a nice little, uh, little spray line so we know how far we should be going with things. Sub assemblies like this just make the job of doing things fast and much easier and that one time when you find out that because you glued something on your in your own way it's really irritating so if you can avoid it I always would. We don't even have to worry too much if these colours aren't smoothly mixed on the base. Um, it's a lot of it's going to get covered over anyway, and we just want this kind of bluish purple to be absolutely everywhere. So, stippling it on, pretty rough and ready. Make sure you get it in the recesses if at all possible. It's quite an angular model, and there's a few little surprising bits like these torpedo holes. We'll be doing that all over the model. Okay, so for the next step, we've got Avalan Sunset, which is a base from Citadel, and we're going to be involving that with our previous mix. This looks like quite a big jump in terms of the colour but obviously it's up to us how much we want to put of the yellow in this next stage. So using our texture palette we can work these two colours in until it's at a level we're happy at. And this is going to be going over the majority of the model. I'm going to pull it to bits so I can get the different areas. But this is going to be covering everywhere except for the most extreme recesses. And it's going to take a while but we're going to build this up. I'm going to try and leave the panels slightly darker throughout all of this process so you'll see that become more evident shortly but for now we're just working quickly over the model and as I said with the base coat don't worry if this doesn't look perfect that's not the point of it we're building up so many layers that it shouldn't matter if um, if things aren't absolutely spot on or pristine or smooth or whatever uh, that's not the final finish that we're going for. So we're going to do this all over the model and then we'll just carry on adding the yellow as we go through the consecutive stages. So I thought it was worth quickly showing this. If you pull too much from the blue, if you mix blue and yellow you'll end up getting green. So we're not trying to paint sunny pastures here. This wouldn't matter too much in the in the final effect, it could actually look quite nice but I'm wanting it to go from something that looks a little bit cooler so I'm making care to pull more from the purple than I am from the blue by adding it to the yellow which is going to result in us achieving this colour here rather than this colour here. This is a lovely colour but it's just not the colour that we're looking for in the final effect. Another thing to note, it's going to look a little bit weird if these colours here um, fade completely smoothly and don't get darker towards the recesses so periodically throughout the painting even though I've got the line glides from the priming, line guides, I'm going to be popping this back on there and that is going to make sure that it's, it's harder to reach these areas therefore they stay darker. If we don't do that it's going to make it look like these, this has been painted in two separate pieces which is a, a real, it's probably the only real downside of sub-assembly painting but it is somewhat of an issue so that's why you would uh, keep, them, keep them to hand and then you can put them on, paint with them there or just use them as a reference, either way is good. So with that stage done it's just a matter of adding a little bit more yellow to our mix, a tiny bit of the blue, but only a little and 
stepping up things in terms of color. We're looking to make sure that we start in the middle where we can make less mistakes. And then once we're happy with the amount of paint on the brush and how it's leaving it and stuff like that, we'll work it closer towards the edges and carefully fade over those panel lines like that. So again, it's just this approach all over the entirety of the piece. It goes incredibly fast, so there's no need to rush it any further. If you feel that slowing down a little is going to improve the quality of what you're doing, um, then I'd absolutely go for it. I always think it's worth taking a, uh, a couple of extra minutes to have a really nice noticeable increase on the end result. Okay, so we spoke at the start of the video about trying to echo this kind of um, warmth that we see more in evidence towards the top of the model. Um, we're going to do that by introducing Doomball Brown from Games Workshop and we're going to try and introduce that more towards the top of the model than we are at the bottom. Um, we're going to be using a smaller brush, it's still large, but I'm going to be concentrating that around these panels a little bit in splotches, slightly on the lower half, more on the middle section and then much more on the turret. So we're going to have to do this fairly carefully. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow, but not much. We've actually got a fair bit more water on the brush than we'd normally have, and that's because we don't want this to be a completely transparent stage. Uh, sorry, a completely opaque stage. We're looking more for something slightly transparent. So especially lower down where we don't want too much of this in evidence. We're going to be taking great care concentrating on the gaps between panels. And building it up in a kind of a, a, a very subtle, it's, it's almost like a, a glow um, that we're applying here. So gently, gently, take your time, a little bit more moisture than normal, keep it light. And we're not looking to obscure anything with this, but we are looking to add another layer of interest that we wouldn't otherwise have if we uh, we just went lin uh, up in a linear fashion just adding more and more of the avalanche sunset so you can scuff it on you can stipple it on but we're still looking to introduce that to the panels at this stage we can really see things starting to take form i've popped on a little bit of a mix with more of the avalanche sunset in there just to get an idea of the contrast but as the step's going to take a while, and I think it'd be interesting for you to see exactly how I approach it, I'm going to pop on a time lapse. I'm going to be using a smaller brush for the top second just section just because the stuff here is a little bit more delicate, so getting those panel lines might be a bit tricky with a size large. But um, I'll pop on time lapse and let's see how we can go. Okay, so after a lot of jumping around, um, backwards and forwards with the Doomball Grey and the Avalanche Sunset and our original mix, we've really started to see this take form now. So we've got more brown evident up here, or it's it's more opaque, it's a bit softer down here, but the volume's working really well. Um, you will have seen me pulling bits off to make sure that I can get to the relevant areas, but overall we're going really, really well. So. The next step is going to be to increase the avalanche sunset and then add in some bone to the mix as well. And we're going to be doing more of the dry brushing motions rather than the stippling motions as we start concentrating more on these edges. So for our next stage, we've got quite an interesting mix of paints. We're actually going to be bringing these into play. So we've got our avalanche sunset, um, screaming skull, we have to make things brighter. And then the interesting ones that we're going to be trying out are these three, which are obviously perhaps not what you'd expect, we're going to be trying to bring those in in our highlights to add another layer of interest. The highlights are going to be more dry brushing than stippling, 
um, as you go throughout the painting. Uh, we start with more stippling and finish with more uh, tr traditional dry brushing, flicking backwards and forwards, which you'll be able to see on the video. But these are the three colors that we're going to be trying to bring into play. So it's taken quite a while, but I'm really pleased with the, the overall result. I'm just going around now with a medium, uh, cleaning out any little bits of paint that I've collected from the result of the dry brushing. It's quite a physical process, so dusting uh, after each large stage kind of makes sense. I think that's been largely successful. We've got a little bit of disparity between the color of the bottom section, where we primarily use the blue, which has obviously tinted the yellow towards green, and the middle and upper section. But I've tried to tie that in by using the same highlights top to bottom and bottom to top. So I'm just gonna go around and tidy this up. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, we are going to be detailing the miniature next. That will be linked here. And we're also going to have a video on how to paint the base. So that's using Games Workshop Texture Paints. I think we've got a fantastic result with that. We'll link that here next to the Blood Thirster. We've had a really good result there. Um, just two or three hours, a limited selection of paints, maybe 10, and we've got a fantastic final result. The colors we've got, um, we didn't expect to have a green in there, but involving that yellow and the blue from the base, kind of pulling it through, we've had a really interesting result. It's come out really, really nicely. If you'd like to see me paint any more Star Wars Legion, or there's any particular model or color or technique you'd like to see me tackle, uh, please comment below. Um, please like, comment and subscribe and if you're in any groups where you think other people might benefit from this tutorial then share it around, spread the word. Thank you very much. <laughs>